You're on. Okay. Uh, good morning. It's Friday, July 9th. Tuftonboro Board of Selectmen's work session. We're here primarily to meet with uh, construction manager Tom Hill and architect Phil Bennett. Come on down. The uh, I do have to say that Jerry is supposed to be here. Yeah. He's running a little late. Oh, okay. So if you guys had other business to take care of, that would be great if we could sure. get through that first and then uh, we can certainly address those at the yep. end. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll hold you in advance for a couple of minutes. Do we have any public input? <coughs> yes. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. How are you? Dandy. How about you? Dandy, dandy. So, I'm coming to you. Um, Taxpayer, I received this in the mail. Um, I have the original, just so you can see this. So there's no return address, there's no green card, there's nothing. I received this in the mail. Anybody have Cert any idea what it would be? Certified? Yep. No green card, no return address, no and nothing. Nothing. Nothing so, at all. And that was a, a, a notice. A notice, yeah. Yep. So. No idea. No. So, so, so you, this this so notice could, came to us. Yeah. So there, so there's no notification who it's from. No green card. No return address. What's, nothing. What's the zero? Who prints the who prints the labels? So this this was mailed from Wolfboro. Right. This came from the planning board. Okay. okay. This is an abutter's notice. The notice wasn't signed. So you, there, there was a notice in it. There was a notice, but okay. but who who would receive this? when there's no notification as to who it's from. Nobody. And the planning board was told in the past that the notices need to be mailed out from the town of Tuftonboro, and this came from the town of Wolfboro. So, hmm, yeah. It's a problem that we're currently working on. It's a problem that I was fired for, yeah. and it's a problem that is still occurring. Well, thank you for bringing it to our attention. Now, did that notice give uh, a date when there was going to be something happening? It gave a date of July 15th, but I didn't receive the notice in time. And you won't receive a green card back because there was none. So your contention would be that due to improper notification that any discussion of that subject would be null and void Bingo. at that meeting. Mm -hmm. And, like I said, it, it didn't, there was no green card. I mean, normally when you get a certified return receipt, you're supposed to do a green card. Right. I mean, I do this all the time in business. And also, you should, it should be addressed, you know, there should be a return address. Why, isn't, why aren't they using town letterhead? I mean, when that we have town envelopes. Yeah, good question. I mean. It goes on and on and on. Yeah, it does. It's an old story. Well, and I don't like it when it comes back and bites me in the butt. So, I hope you guys address this, and I really think you ought to look and see. You might have to reschedule that July 15th, because I didn't receive proper notice. What was it on? It's on Verizon Cell Tower, which I'm perfectly fine with, but notice was not received in time. This is the cell tower, though. Yeah, on the town. Yeah, we got it. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> okay. you guys should look at the schedule that here. And... Yes. We're working on that situation. Actually, that would take yeah. major steps forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Have you. a great day. Bye. Julia. Have a good one. Well, I'm going to do the minutes from July 2nd. Uh, this is all from Monday. Yeah, we'll do those on Monday. We have two we, different we'll agendas. do a couple of signature this items here. This is from Monday. Right. Oh, Probably yeah. under here. Kathy's way ahead of us. That's Monday's agenda. This is today's just these two things here. That's so, it. <laughs> so the first item we have for signature is MS535. The actual form. Yep. And uh, we approved signing it before, is that right? We approved the financial report. All right. You didn't okay. Even... So I'll entertain a motion to sign the MS535. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Um, in favor. Hmm? I voted late. Oh, okay.
The other is uh, a C CDBG Citizen Participation Plan for CDBG projects. This is something that that C CDBG wants in place in connection with specifically at this point the, the water project that's, that they're funding uh, that is uh, going on at North Country Village. So I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. I, I did look it over briefly. It's sort of a boilerplate thing. I'll make a motion that we have the chair sign this. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 six months to get windows for the new house he's going to build. So things are looking like they're looking. We have a project in Hanover, 18 weeks for the windows. Wow. 18 weeks. I'm assuming that's a that's standard size and nothing custom. Correct. Yeah. Demonstration at Union Wharf has been canceled for today due to weather. In case anybody watches the video, yeah, and rescheduled for nine o'clock next Friday. Yes. Correct. Yep. And you did put out a notice on that, right? On the website. I put rescheduled across right. it and right. put it out on the board out here. So I was going to post them at the post offices but we don't normally post there anymore so if you have a copy of it I'd be more than happy to drop it off and put it on the board. 
Sure. I'm going by to get my name. Okay. Yeah. And I'll repost it anyway for Friday. Sure. Good. Even though I wrote reschedule, I think I'm going to post it. I have you here, Gordon. I'm going to send Jean. Um, I just got notification that the budget and financial um, workshop mm -hmm. is going to be running in September. And I know there was people who wanted to go last year, but the whole COVID thing. Are they doing it live this year? Or is no. It still going to be a virtual. Yeah. Still, still is a, a virtual meeting. Yeah. Okay. But There's I'll no give it to her. There's no free lunch. Yeah, my was a good cold cut plate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting beside that young lady from Langley. Easy. <laughs> Easy. She was a knife cake. I didn't know a lot about Langley. Hmm. And then to find out how small that place is. Oh, yeah, there's a whole back and beyond. Yeah. They were having a huge discussion about paying their, their new police chief $30,000 a year. Where's this? Langdon, New Hampshire. Oh, I think the population yeah, here about that. <laughs> it's it's going to want to raise. Right. I think the population was something like 750 the last time we were at that. It's mm -hmm. very small. Any idea how far out Jerry is? I'm not sure. I can double check here. thinking if it's going to be a few minutes maybe we'll take a quick break rather than just that or yeah, that we exactly. go into non-public for a few minutes yeah well we, we do have a non-public yeah we do that yeah that would yeah. be that would, that would that would help sure <laughs> all right yeah if everybody could start, step out and go walk sure yeah. just reveling in the quiet <laughs> yeah when i have a seven and a five year old in from colorado i'll huh? take anything for quiet Do a, a vote. You're gonna do your vote. So, yep. For the camera's purpose, would you tell me you're going into a non-public yeah. thing? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I'll move that we go into a non-public for RSA 91-3, A, Roman 2, Karen A. That's uh, personnel, right? I'll second. Marcusing, yes. I'll be yes. I guess. Okay. You're on. That's ready. Okay, so we're back in a non-public session. And uh, come on, guys. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. The seat and bring it forward. Yeah. There's room for three. We have three seats at the table. All right. So in the last three weeks, we've um, tried to go back to finding different solutions in order to try and see what else is out there in order to adjust, potentially adjust the budget, which I think is what our mission was. Um, we came back with some options in different arenas, and so he has a little bit of backup. Some of the um, sub-trade documentation that backs that up. And I also um, created sort of a performer piece that um, captures the project at large. So um, I may not have all the information, but at least it gives an overview of uh, all the all the dollars and cents that, at least that I know of, and um, maybe this is probably where we start and talk about what the big picture is, and then we can speak about the details. 
So this budget analysis is prior to these changes? Um, it captures that at the, at the bottom. So, but it, it was based on where we left off last week or last time. And then at the bottom, it summarizes some of the um, options. And um, I think it's really up for discussion of um, where and or if there's an actual potential opportunity. So I think today's um, bottom line here is, is, is this something that we want to attack now or not? And, and do, we have a, do we have a half a chance? And or is this just at this point in time something that we need to revisit? So, so just going from the top down, um, I didn't think you guys actually bought the land. I think you owned it. So that really doesn't count. Soft costs, as far as I know from Phil, uh, there's $37,000 that's um, being slated for construction and administration. I'm assuming the $15,000 that we set as a pre-construction fee uh, initially comes out of the same bucket. So I would assume that that would be part of this equation. What, what are construction contract or pre-construction fees? What exactly is that? That's the contractor's um, part of doing all the preparation in order to get to, to the point of construction. So that's all the estimating we've been doing. That's all the, um, all the interaction with the engineers and architects. <coughs> uh, so it's a pre-construction piece of our component of and the project. So that's yours? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that, that has all been invoiced already, is that correct? Right. As far as I understand. Right. <coughs> but I'm assuming it comes out of this bucket of money. So uh, that's why I put it in there. I, I, it may or may not be. And, and you guys need to give me some guidance if it's, if it's a different outcome. Um, <coughs> Phil originally always carried a $4,000 construction uh, testing uh, agency fee. That would be for some um, on-site testing that would be required. This is something that usually is carried by owners um, due to conflict of interest. And so it may or may not be at all value that, can, that needs to be used, um, but it's something that um, has been a placeholder in, in full soft cost budget. <coughs> Site security, um, it's something that we haven't carried. Um, it's also at, at all value that may or may not necessarily be needed. Um, Chuck, I don't know that we put fencing in there. We usually put a, oh. we usually have fencing and put a gate on at the entrance of a job site. Um, but outside of that, we have not carried any um, cameras or police activity or any other special uh, features regarding creating um, site uh, security. Um, <coughs> The one thing that you guys, I believe it's under your um, management is the builder's risk insurance policy based on the agreement. Mm -hmm. So that may or may not be something that we want to visit and is that money coming out of the market or not. So, so soft cost comes to about $59,000 at this stage. Uh, the budget we presented to you guys the last time is the dollars and cents under the construction section. So for now, this is capturing the information we presented to you the last time. The second page um, is the FF&E. I'm not sure where you guys stand with FF&E, but the $51,000 is the proposal that was a proposal that was presented for the FF&E. Now, I don't know if there's further activity on that or not. Since then, um, if there's anything that's been added or deleted to that. I also know that you guys are going to have to move some computers, you're going to have to do some data hookup. Uh, I don't know if you're buying any new equipment for the uh, PD. Um, and I believe we have security in the budget, so security shouldn't be in. I was going to say, I thought that was part of the construction. I, I believe it is. That's one of the bids you had. Yeah. This is sort of a standard form I create just okay. for projects. So. In some cases, it's it's not part of the plans. In this particular case, I think it is. Made me nervous for a second when I saw zero there. <laughs> so, um, so if, if any, if that's still holding true around fifty-one thousand, 
total project comes to 19, 1.987. <coughs> Um, I understand the original owner contingency goal value was made zero. Um, I don't know what the exact dollar value was that was at the vote, but I was on the assumption is somewhere around 1.77, if that's a fair um, guess. Actually, you're right, somewhere around that. I, 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 I don't have the exact number. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the delta is around 217,000. I think I handed out a little piece of paper to you that, that actually adds up to around $120,000 in savings. I think 10. Yeah, that, those are direct costs, mm -hmm. and those are going to add the, the um, content contractor fee and contingency in it, which is another $10,000. Okay. So um, I captured that on the stock. Mm -hmm. And so that, Gives us gets us to a point of about a ninety six thousand dollars, assuming all of the recommendations we've made are things that are going to be accepted. So I guess the next step is really to get into what the recommendations are. Are there any of those that are accepted or acceptable or not? And then secondly, what other things can we talk about in order to try and change the ninety six thousand dollar deficit? So if there's still if there's still any interest in moving forward beyond that point, then I think we've still got something to talk about. So, okay. so before we get to the next piece, I know one of the things that you'd identified in the last meeting is that you were having a difficult time getting contractors to to provide you with a bid, mm -hmm. uh, and in, in, and I think in some some of the areas, if I remember correctly, you didn't have any bids. Is that? <coughs> I think we were at a point where we have a bid for every line item, okay. at least one. Okay. There were some that were multiple. Right. But um, we, for example, we're struggling to get what I would think is a better electrical price, which is struggling to get people interested, they get into the documents, <coughs> and then they pull out at the last minute. So I think we've called 17 electricians to price this project. So <coughs> everybody's busy. I just don't get it. I mean, I just don't understand what the deal is. It's a nice project, so. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, <laughs> we, we do have, I think we have three, <coughs> I think we have two or three hard bids on electrical. So from the USDA standpoint, we were gonna provide three proposals. Mm -hmm. At least we have in some of the major arenas, we, we have three proposals as we stand today, but there are a couple that we don't have. For example, framing. We only have one framing price. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and Phil, have you had any any uh, dialogue with the uh, RDA relative to that specific issue? There is um, guideline in their guidelines. It does state that there is a, a way a method of waiving where you can't get on a circumstances such as this, unpredictable circumstances, where you don't have to have three bids. Mm -hmm. But I think we would have to go through with Heather and... Um, state our case. Yeah, we would have to state the case. Mm -hmm. and why? You know, I think at, at this point, everybody's aware of how difficult it is to get bids. But I wouldn't say that's a showstopper in itself. But okay. It's something that we would have to go through each of the divisions to bring to their attention and, and discuss what, if any, options there are. Uh, do you guys have any questions or comments before we get into going through his uh, detail? On so the build, on the builder's there? risk side of things, we're going to have to plan that because we checked with our insurance company and they don't have that. We've done in the past is, is we also buy builders risk on a regular basis for projects. So what we've done in the past is, is we'll get a proposal from our provider, and if you can get a proposal from your 
a regular insurance provider. Right. We look at the two of them, which is the most cost effective. Mm -hmm. Why don't we, so why we go forward with that? Because I think she's around $14,000 on this Remax one. So that's our yeah. carrier. As far as, the, as far as the furniture goes, I didn't check any further. The, I did get a call yesterday from the guy asking where, where the status was, and I said, uh, I can't really, uh, you know, I wasn't sure where we were going because it's still, it's, it's 51000 We still need to come up with, we need some furnishings anyways. Even if we go cheaper, <coughs> it's not going to be zero. But I didn't I would ask him to sharpen the pencil or eliminate a few things because I wasn't sure where we were. So that's the right price then, 51 It probably could be adjusted because it depends on the on the level of the furniture and the, the you know, whether it's vinyl, cloth, you know, actual. And we did also talk about um, Cobbville have a um, cabinet maker or there's a company that they, they carry for some of the built-in stuff that they're doing who could also do the FF and E so we can get an alternate price mm -hmm. from them based on the same um, spec <coughs> that the previous ones priced. And I, I thought we were going to have that, but um, it kind of got missed. So certainly that's, that'll get looked into. Still out there as a, and as a potential. Yeah. Okay. But as, as she said, it's, it's not going to bring it you know, it's, it's still going to be somewhere in the 40 or 50 range of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not going to be free. Right. Right. And we still haven't addressed the computer systems or the phone system for that matter. So, right. The security systems. The security is already one of the bids we had. Yeah. yeah. Security is in the total, uh, total alarm systems or something was a company, I think. Yeah. Uh, so it's in the building fire. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So we have just on that note, we have the fire alarm, TV. Now that's getting the TV to the point in the wall. That's not the TVs, mm -hmm. right? So alarm system and access control. Okay. So, that's so there's the, no TVs on the wall at all. Um, the I monitors for the yeah. Well, that's the as in spec TVs, right? Yeah. Um, it's usually part of the network. I, think. I thought it was uh, the full system, but I can have to check that. Yeah, I don't have that proposal yet. We can back that up. We can check into that. Okay. But you, your points were taken. We don't have telephone system, right. and we don't have um, a computer. Yeah, but we have the wiring for the, for the data. We have data. We have data outlets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's really it's just the punch down of the computer system. So if somebody, what your current system is, you bring it with you. Right. Somebody's a little rich for the coming to come <coughs> play and, and set them up. So mm -hmm. I know you, the chief has a. a well you guys have a. <coughs> you work with for right. you do. You know, I don't know if you've got a proposal from them yet in order to do the switch over. Right. That you should ask for. Because mm -hmm. we all have to coordinate with them. Yep. And in that, is there wireless in that? Yeah. There is some, but a lot of it's going to be hardwired still. Right. right. Yeah, there's three. Because originally I said no, but then we discussed it and said, yeah, we better put some in. I have to, I guess we can go through this exercise, but I, I got to kind of preface this by saying that I don't really see a point in changing the project just because the market seems to have exploded. I mean, I think we, for instance, I mean, if we start in your, in your cost savings, I don't know how you're going to do this job without some machinery. So you're not going to have a wall there. How are you going to get your roofing up? When we got the price from the framing guy, we 
found out after the fact that he he's carrying his own well. Okay, so, so that's, that's a, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so, we, we so that was a duplicate basically. Yeah. After everybody's proposal, we went right. and asked him, hey, are, you, "Are you carrying a load, or are we carrying a load?" And and he said he was bringing his own. So that was an easy, mm -hmm. an easy veto. And he went with DOS and concrete. <coughs> 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 Window change to Sanford Hills. Did the quality of the windows change as well? I mean, we're looking at what vinyl. <coughs> it's a brand name change. So you're, <coughs> you're going from a, a, a pellet product to a a Matthew Hills. <coughs> but we're still getting a cloud window that's thermal paint. Same specs. Oh. Right. We've had good luck with Matthew's brothers in the past. <laughs> As far as the quality goes, the product, product, excuse me. Um, I just like had really bad luck with Matthews and yeah. unclad windows. Okay. Well, I, I never dealt with windows. anything but clad windows. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was frankly surprised at how little the difference was. Yeah. So it means that we were, we were getting a really good price from Pella, because Pella is generally quite a bit more mm -hmm. on, on the average. Mm -hmm. So. It's, I think it's the lower level pallet product, which yeah. then it wasn't a big number to start with. Mm -hmm. So, mm. um, I've got some changes on the flooring. I, I don't know if I handed this up. This gives a little more detail on some of the pieces and parts, which would be really interesting. Uh, so, this is the, the <coughs> proposal from the um, flooring company, and you can see his original proposal and for what they changed some scope. Um, so that's really the, <coughs> the big changes there. So that's what makes up the $7,500 difference. Um, so you can see where that came from. Um, I unfortunately didn't speak to them personally, so I'm not. Basically, it takes out the epoxy flooring that was associated, I think, with the process area. Right. And um, <clears throat> and adds in the ceiling of those areas so that it can still be washed down and, and you still have the same ability but by epoxy coatings, which were expensive. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that was the bigger the so that's the Duraflex. Yeah. Well, the other expensive part was the uh, on the uh, uh, the welding of the of the code base to the to the flooring itself too. It's it's pretty expensive there, so we got an alternative there too. So, and it's not like it's a medical facility, yeah. although you do have potential set areas where you may have <coughs> blood issues. But it's not like it's a medical facility where you want to have everything welded. So you have. So, to if you seal the concrete, does that preclude you ever changing that in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You can certainly do that. So that, that's the finish, the seal of concrete in the project in there. I believe so, yes. That's what they're proposing. We were just looking for options. Mm -hmm. So they may, not, they may not be the right ones, but yeah. it comes back to you guys to express your interests. Uh, so that was the 7500 Division 9, Division 10. Um, I think there's a story behind why we pulled the drop box out. I think. The place. Yeah, I'm not sure about the drop box. I, I said that I could. There's programs that give them to us sometimes, so. I think that's. Sometimes we need a space. Yep. Yeah. Well, if not, we'll, we'll have to buy it later, but we can. Yeah. That's, as long as we have the space to put it in, we can do that. We don't have to do that right away but there is there were programs I believe this they still probably exist to donate them so that's why I pulled that's why I said you could probably pull it so <coughs> on the heating system I guess we're removing loop six and loop four one of those you know? I believe that's the garage garage area the radiant heat in the garage area would go to a modine style heater the way I understand it, and um, uh, and then many spots would be would be taking up the majority of the heating of the rest of the building.
building, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. I don't have the proposal in front of me, but. Well, the, the, like, you're only taking the radiant. You that. Yeah, yeah. You, you'd only take out the radiant in the garage, but it's still the radiant Correct. in the rest of the building. Yes. The radiant is still the primary heat right. source in the occupied spaces. Um, the mini splits, they're, they're also heat pumps. So there are two loops that are coming out, not just one. Were there two loops in the garage? I think I can't remember exactly. <coughs> Using multi zone mini split for FC6 and FC4, which would include ceiling and set. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does this change anything about the makeup here system or not? I, I I'm not entirely sure what the, I haven't seen the the um, proposal to reduce the price. Just briefly the electrical. I don't think the makeup changes. I don't think it does either. It's merely just the delivery type instead of having the um, the zones into the uh, processing space. So. Yeah, because it's heat loop, heat loop six to heat loop two. What does that mean? They're going to have, they merge the two into one heat loop? I believe so. But both heat loops still exist. <coughs> I think they're eliminating one and they're tying one into the other so that you still have. So you're saving uh, a valve and, and the programming of that valve essentially? And the thermostat for it. All right. So you're combining the corridor, the squad room records, small evidence with the break room, and making that all one loop. And it it was seven and eight. It took out. Or just no, seven. six eight loops, six two and four and three. Loop four. Right. Or up. What's heat loop six? Heat loop C two. six is the break room. Okay. Four. And that, that combines with two, wasn't it? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then heat loop four, four to three. three combines with three. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I I'm not saying that these aren't feasible, but <coughs> we definitely want to run past the engineers to confirm that the the heat loss is not going to um, this this is going to keep up with the heat loss. But I was looking at the. It was zone eight was coming out all together, is that right? No radiant in the garage. Okay, so that's that's and zone just, eight. Just using a modine heater. Right. So yeah. there's still and, and you're only you're saving twenty two hundred bucks by doing that. Mm -hmm. The sixty four hundred for the radiant. Yeah, but you're discussing <coughs> two hundred for the modine. Oh, okay. That's what you're about the but then it starts talking about using multi zone mini splits for a couple of those areas too. FC6 so, so that drops uh, uh, concealing cassettes. Uh, $8,600 $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, on yeah. But, I mean... The biggest uh, change is not having AC in the AC. I mean, no AC in the garage. That's a net savings. Right. Yeah, that's 5400 but there's a $19,000 by changing what was a ducted unit to a Mini split. No, it's, it's no, eighty seven hundred. Right. So you because the mini split is. Oh right. You remove nineteen eight. You remove <coughs> eleven thousand. So eighty seven hundred. Yeah, eighty eight hundred dollars reduction. Uh, In terms of performance, I think the, the biggest thing is going to be more of the visual aspect. You're going to see the cassettes. Um, the, the mini split. Cassette. <laughs> Slightly different handling of the air. You don't have a, a recessed unit 
that is ducted to the space. You're going to have a cassette right in the room. Performance-wise, I'm not sure, but generally they can't perform the same way. It's more of a visual. Yeah. <laughs> cassette would be on the ceiling, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I thought, I, I thought there was cassettes that actually are flush with the ceiling. There right. are. Right. Um, right. So the difference is, but we it's, don't know it's taking the air in and cooling it and sending it back out from the cassette, as opposed to just forcing air out through the... But some of them were ducted to outside, I thought. That's, that was my... I no, don't know what the FC6 the and FC4 square, are. Square footage, square footage on the garage. Seven... <coughs> <coughs> Seven ninety total between the two. So seven ninety total. So eight <coughs> square feet. savings on the radiant in the garage. <coughs> well, $6,400 savings on radiant is the heat six and two and four and three. And then he's adding a modine to the garage at 4,200 bucks, but there's no net savings on not doing the hydraulic or not radiant yeah. in the garage. Yeah. So, there so, so, so that's, that's a savings, that's a savings. But that's not in the garage. Right. This is the, this is the savings in the garage, sixty four hundred, replaced by forty two hundred. Right, so that's a. How that's can it possibly be sixty four hundred dollars for the radiant heat garage? So, <laughs> no, no. I mean, if, if you look at the other two spaces, they're bigger. Yeah, but what you're doing it with the other, you're not taking any radiant out of the other spaces. You're tying them together. So you're taking out controls and maybe some distribution. When you take the radiant totally out, now you're pulling all the the pipe out of the manifold, out of the floor, and all that stuff as well. <coughs> Cut one pipe off the manifold. That's my understanding, right? You're talking about you're, these other loops. You're not you're not removing, removing anything. You're right. just you're just tying them together. Tying them together. So the so the thirty four hundred dollars savings. <coughs> I mean, I just I. I, I this continues to drive me forward to canceling this thing this year because I have a two car garage. I have radiant heat that I install, had installed. Hot water radiant heat in a two car garage. And it's a wide two car garage. And it cost me, I think, 30, 3200 bucks once you get to the boiler, <coughs> circulators, all of it. Even the tempering valves because you don't want to run the water cooler. I mean, 6400 bucks is just way out of line. It's impossible. I think it's, I think I mean, it's, we could go do it on a Saturday, <laughs> you know, lay the lines out there. I can't imagine the controls cost that much. I mean, it's a 4,500 square foot building, which isn't significantly larger than well, some houses. Essentially, they're saying the heat loops, they're eliminating controls for 30, you know, they don't cost that much. <coughs> I, I, that's just. I wish I weren't building a house currently. Yeah. But I wouldn't know any of this shit. But it just seems like it's <coughs> My concern with the the fourth bullet point on there is going to many splits. Well versus the ducted units. <clears throat> I mean, what are those places that need to be ducted? I mean, that's the question. Some of these places with the conditioned air had to be, needed to be ducted. So the mini splits are only effective when they're on an outside wall, is that what you're saying? I don't know, you can duct, you can put them over, but 
these were I, I'm not sure I'm not sure how they uh, the 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 AC unit in itself doesn't provide the fresh air that comes from the ERV it's separate total and that has to, well the ERVs in in the original <coughs> design the ERVs bring the air into the ducting work of mm -hmm. the AC units so it's combined air movement if you take the the um, ducted units out then the ERV will have to have a pipe that goes to the, each of those spaces that's, directly. That's what I was getting at. Is but it's not, it's not, you're not introducing another ERV, you're just introducing some replacement duct work. <coughs> so there will be a, a net right. savings, it just won't be, um, you're not just pulling this out completely, you are, it's going to be some going back in. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess I'm questioning it, are we sure of that, is what they counted in there? adding the other ducts to make up the air. That's, that's just my question. <clears throat> well, and obviously before any of this was agreed, we had to have the, we would strongly recommend that the engineers go over the proposals to make sure <clears throat> that it, it's like for like. It's gonna right. work. Um, and I mean, again, there's a reason why they had different zones. Um, obviously, if you combine these three rooms into one zone, where do you put the thermostat and who's, and who's uncomfortable and who's... <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's no different than why do, you put, why do you put multiple zones in your house rather than, than just one? Uh, I mean, one gets the basic level, but and, and wherever the thermostat is, you can get the comfort good there, but everything else, unless the system is properly balanced, uh, which is... Part of the house is absolutely consistent. Yeah, it, yeah. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna have hotter spaces and colder spaces. Right. I think the other side of the coin is, is, are you trying to meet the budget or are you trying to meet the comfort of the building? So, so, uh, so, so, we don't want to. We're buying a, say, a 50-year building. Okay, right. uh, uh, and and if what we're doing here is, uh, is making substitutions that are going to affect uh, affect the performance of the building, our ability to use it well, the longevity of the building, then that's not a good thing. Uh, yeah. no, so if there, are some, if there are some changes in, uh, <coughs> some iterative changes in, in uh, design or in systems that help us from a cost standpoint, without affecting the functionality, that's one thing. But if, yeah. if, if what we're doing is, this is the number we gotta meet, and here's where we're gonna go, and so, you know, we're not, we're gonna leave all this stuff out. Uh, and then, 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 even <coughs> well, that's right. Then, then things that get left out will have to be added in later, and some of the things that are, <coughs> which is a, uh, a concern, but a greater concern is a substitution that that doesn't function to the same level that you then just have to live with because uh, it it, it uh, you know, it's yeah. A, I would. I mean, I look at the the heating HVAC system that we've got designed, and you have no money for commissioning. And I just think of the courthouse over there, Bureau County. Superior Court, which is never operated properly, ever. The air conditions on in the wintertime all the time, and the heat's on in the summer. It's never been balanced. And if you don't go through a commissioning, then that's what you end up with. And we spent, on the nursing home, I think, close to 20 grand on commissioning. But that's an enormous building. It had lots of systems. But, there's no money in the budget currently for that sort of activity. And I think we need to make sure that we don't cut everything out and then find ourselves trying to budget annually for upgrades and, and costs. I mean, if your HVAC isn't balanced, your energy costs go up it's not working efficiently. So now your annual budgeting changes because you've done that. 
to Bill's point, I think some of these some of these changes that are proposed are the sort of thing that you can't redo later on. Right. Uh, reducing these to one zone, you're not going to have an option to turn them back into three zones later on. Not with the, the retrofit to do it is yeah. uh, is substantial. Right. right. So if it doesn't work, off of that, there's no option to <coughs> upgrade, not cost effectively anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's like breathing in the garage. You know, I know the hose doesn't cost $6,400, and putting it in the cement doesn't cost $6,400, so do you just put it in and not hook it up? I mean, because you aren't going to get into that slab again once it's built, it's done. So yeah, so we, even if we can't, we don't have ninety six thousand dollars we can take away. We don't already have another at maximum fourteen thousand for the builder's risk insurance. So now we're up to one hundred ten thousand dollars. So there is another potential, but I I talked to the chief. The um, there is a for the EOC and. Chief's concerned with whether the fire station was already designated the EOC or whether it was going to be con um, a conflict there because obviously I don't think you're going to get grant funds for having two EOCs in a town. Well, <laughs> so um, we really need when, to. when you say designated EOC, designated how? <clears throat> so I, I can tell you we did not. I. I, I I'll, I will have to verify this, but I, my memory is we did not get any grant funding in building that uh, fire station. That fire station. We took out a loan. We're still <coughs> paying for it. Okay. Right. We did not get any government <coughs> grant money, so we didn't get any EOC grant money to build that. So uh, I'll, I will double check with uh, Chief Thompson that we haven't had other. Facility kind of like granted with respect to that. Yeah. So anyway, so if do, do we have any sense for EOC grant size? Yeah, the the maximum you can you can either do it by bits or you can go for a, a, a max, um, which applies to the whole thing, and that is one hundred and twenty-five thousand. But it, it doesn't actually that money doesn't go towards the construction of the building. It's more of, it goes towards the fit out and other items that contribute to the operation of the building. But it obviously releases funds that you would have otherwise spent right. on those it's items. 56, but it's worth but the, hundred, the 125, is a, that's a secret, right? That's the most they'll do. Right. <clears throat> but you have to have $125,000 in qualified items. Right, to and, and the generator. Is, is one of them. Okay. Um, and arguably, there's a, all of the um, the automatic switch, you know, panel, and, and all the items associated with the generator, um, the communication equipment in the EOC room. So I don't know if we could actually add it up to 125,000, but it's not going to be far off. But the other issue, which is concerning, is the, that you still don't have any contingency, owner contingency, and that was kind of like what we were holding, but... Oh, you have $89,000 in that. That's, that's the builder's contingency. Ah, well, mm -hmm. um, And there really are two different things, and, and really the term contingency is probably a bit misleading. It's, the owner's is more of a... Just in case. Yeah. <coughs> Whereas the, the contractor's contingency is something that you assume is spent, but if everything goes well, it doesn't get spent. Um, to sort of oversimplify it a bit. Yeah. So, so if it doesn't get spent, where does it go? It, you don't pay it. Okay. So it does not become an expense. Unless Correct. Okay. Right. It is part of the GMP, though. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I understand the other part of it. Right. I mean, I think the issue is, is, especially with such a volatile environment that we're in, mm -hmm. 
right now you, you have lumber that goes up again. That's what you use that for. <coughs> now you have a sub that when we were actually ready to start and I said, <coughs> sorry, I'm busy somewhere else. So yeah. you go to the next guy who's in line who's a little more expensive. That's what you have to go use that money for. That's the, that's the, the one that's still in here. The builders right. contingency. Right. The builders yeah. contingency. Right. Right. So <coughs> when we last met, which was what, three weeks ago, we were seeing some suggestion that that lumber prices were getting less crazy. Maybe lumber futures were down a little bit. I don't know if, if you're seeing anything more along those lines at this point. Yeah, unfortunately, that's that's at the futures market, and not necessarily at the lumber lumber yard. And right now, we're not seeing it yet. There may be a slight adjustment in place in the, in, but it's you know it may be less than five percent coming down. Uh, in certain things, that mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's a further thing, but then again on the other side, you've got more of these fixed um, type products that are going up. Pallet just went up 6%. They're going up another 6% at the end of the year. You know, so those things are still continually sleep. Availability up. isn't getting any better at all. Availability is getting worse. <coughs> I'm talking six months for a project that I was yeah. speaking with the building codes officer about to get windows. Yeah, it's crazy. These, are not, these are not custom windows. The grant we were just talking about, the hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, is that something that we that you apply for for us? No, it's the town. I mean, we certainly can help you through the process, but it, it, it comes from <coughs> the town effectively, and it's something that can be done at any point. Actually, it's not something that we need to do in advance, um, and it's probably have missed the award point for this year. So, an application at this point would be for next year's funding. Um, but again, the work could be already done. We did on the, on the project in Thornton. The, the project had been done, and the EOC was applied for after completion, um, and they and they got their funds. So it's it's just something a sort of keep in mind. It can help, but <coughs> at the well, same time, yeah. I, so so here's here, here, here's 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 how that works. Okay, I, I mean it's great that you can have it after the fact. But if you're looking for money beyond the top level of what we have funded, we got to have that money when we're doing it. Right. We have to have assurance that we that, that we're going to have that money before we pull the trigger and start it, because it's it's not money that we would offset what we've already approved. It's 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 an unexpected additional. Uh, funding source that we can accept and and put toward the use outside of the budget. Okay. And then these and the electrical bid, all the co-op rebates and all that stuff so I've been applied. See it's not gonna that's a, that's some of the question. I was just looking at that stuff on there because it talks about changing some of the lighting control with standard lights and switches in the hallways, which is gonna affect the the right. money from the co-op. Yeah, we haven't gone into the electrical options, but yeah, it's kind of, and I, and I had some, some questions. What's the difference between a life safety generator and a standby generator? Yeah, I, I think you could put if if you were well, your life on that. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering. I, I, well, I think, think the one is the whole, it's the whole building versus the other one is is essential spaces. But I, I think if you. Going back to the EOC issue, if you had an EOC, then you wouldn't be able to go for that. You would really need the building to operate in its entirety to have it be an EOC. <coughs> and just, you know, just some of the stuff looking at it, Mike. And going down, reducing the number of vehicle charging stations two to one. I didn't know we had any on that. Did we have one on that? hope so. There, there was one. Oh. got a Prius now. Did you see that? No, it's a Tesla. A Tesla. Tesla. Okay, whatever. There was one as an alternate in the documents, but on the prints it shows two stations. Okay, that's. I know we had. That was an alternate costing in there, and I didn't know if we ever decided on having any at all. So that's why I was. Well, he priced it that way simply because he thought that the alternates were out, so it would get got put on. Okay. The so. Yeah, the electrical engineer put it in there, <laughs> even though it was an alternate. That, that that didn't get, I guess that didn't get communicated to them. <coughs> It's certainly a, a, a guaranteed savings. 
Well, especially since they changed it from two to one, there's even more savings <laughs> potentially there. <laughs> And as always, it says this is not a hard number, simply an estimated cost. <laughs> Again, electrician sent me this email, at, as you can see, at 1.51 a.m. this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's having a hard time getting his suppliers to respond to his request. He, he said it'll go up 10000 yeah. before they started making the adjustments. Right. Well, our local electricians are having trouble getting any supplies. They're right. limited in the footage of wire they can buy at any one time. And yeah, it goes right down to PVC condo. Yes, it does. Yeah. Three hundred. Oh, plumbers have the same issues. Yeah. The question is, is it going to come down? <coughs> Maybe. <laughs> and how much? Yeah. Who knows? I, mean, I think that's really where the challenge with this whole thing is. Just, well, it's, it's going up fast, but I don't know that they can come down quick. Well. It, and also well, going back general, to you. That's not how prices work. Right. Right. Prices go up much more quickly. They're sticky coming down. Right. Uh, so if they come down, yeah, they, they come down. And to what level will they come down? Slower and, and, and not as far. Yeah. But I see the name Chuck Loth here. That's been a long time since I've heard his name. It's been around a while. This is a... <laughs> it's me too. Yeah, I worked for G2S for years. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so my father then, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, and the other thing is, you talk about availability, like I know Guy just mentioned, you can only get so much wire at a time and stuff like that. Um, that goes back to the original estimate you did with the six versus eight months, for how many months it's going to take to construct it, because your monthly cost is that. You know, your on-site costs, your rental of the dumpster, your rental of the... If, if it's longer to build it, is that factored into this too? Certainly you don't want to get into winter work because that will drive the cost up at least a third in my estimation. And uh, the later you start in the year, of course, the more the danger. You can't get windows for months, you have issues. It goes on and on and on. But, yeah, the challenge is, is you don't know any of this until you create a start date. Right. Because right. then you will have some tangible to work with. <laughs> See, if, if the flip side of this is, is we have pricing today that captures everything that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. The longer it takes for the decision, the less likely that it's all going to become. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's almost like today in my book is a decision to be made today is are we tabling it or we're going forwards and either way I think the decision needs to be made within at least less than seven days um, because it's hardly worth anybody spending any more time on it right now if it's going to get postponed because it's just going to cost somebody more money if it's not going to happen. Um, if it's going to go forward to next year um, then start up again early in the year so that you're ready to start in spring. But um, I think if it's starting now, I think we're wasting valuable time so that we don't get into the winter condition issues. Yeah, I don't think you're going to have anything close in by cold weather if it's starting now. Even the weather today would be a, a hindrance. Yeah, it might be a little Looking at the, all the moving pieces, I don't think they're going to have the contractors yeah. and everybody in line. You know, you could probably get the site work done, the cement in. And the real bottom line is there isn't enough money in there at the budget. No, I mean, from our yeah. standpoint, we, we're not going anywhere. No. And I, you know, I, is there a, and maybe there isn't, is there um, a benefit to accumulating items as we go forward here? For instance, we know we're going to need I don't know, a thousand feet of Schedule 40 conduit, or, yeah, conduit. Should we be buying that stuff, yeah. watching the market, or is this all, I mean, are they marking it up in their electrical bid and making it a part of their profit? I don't know. Right. You know. Yeah, they're buying data costs and putting a fee on so it covers their operating expenses. And right. so that's, you know, that's how it's factored in. So. 
I mean, there's something, there's some value to that, but at the same token, it's that crystal oh, ball. And it's not like cost either. I mean, it's like you put a store somewhere. Else. Somebody's got to do that. Right. Plus, how much? Yeah, how much you buy? What do you buy? And how much? And who's doing it? Right. That's the big one. Table. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. How, I don't know the, what our options are. Really. Even if we picked up the hundred twenty-five thousand bucks, and even if we could offset um, all of that with what they require you to offset with, yeah, we're still short. I don't know, if we're not short, we're within a couple of thousand dollars of total budget and we haven't created a, a town contingency for it. So I guess my, my position would be that we table it, take a hard look at it again in December and then if we need more money we're just going to have to go ask for it. And if we don't, then we'll go forward. I mean, that would be... Yeah. yeah, the biggest variable is going to be the commodity costs at that point in time. Right. 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 And, and we won't know what those are until we look at it in during the winter, right? right? And I would suggest do it after the first week. You're not going to get any responses around Christmas. So I'd say January so is a good time so to start. So yeah, there's no way to examine the market prior to that. Do, do we have enough information but to proceed on an EOC grant at this point? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just a little work to uh, I sort see of some, I see some value in, in pursuing that piece. Right. The additional, and yeah, the, the additional grant funding. So, you know, and, and I've had more than one person come up to me and say, well, you know, you've got this money, so maybe you can start building the building. You can do this, at least get something going. My understanding of the way our grant with the RDA is set up is they're involved in the process from day one, okay? The, the, the total package has to be greenlighted by them before, and, and they have, they're involved every step of the way in terms of ensuring that the work is being done uh, in accordance with doing inspections, uh, and, and they have to approve what's being done before we pay our funds out for it. So, I, I well, if we have a if we get a million seven and we know it's going to cost a million nine, right? And we start, we're on a fool's errand. I mean, we're <laughs> no, ex exactly. But it, 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 but th this is as I say, I've had more than one person's come up to me and say, "Well, you know, you can if, if you can if you're not." You don't have enough money to do everything. If you get the project started, at least you'll, uh, you'll, I don't you'll think be going. Allow but that, but, really but yeah. the way the grant is set up, the whole thing has to start, has to be approved at once. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they also don't pay their portion of it. Well, until you've gone through your well, budget. That's, that's right. <laughs> but, right. You don't really have that money until you spend yeah. your money. No, that's right. But it's not just that we don't get their money till the end, it's that. All of our money that we spend along the way, they have to sign off on right. as we're spending it uh, to ensure that it's. But to Phil's point, if we're two hundred thousand bucks short and we spend all our money, USDA isn't going to send us a check mm -hmm. until we find two hundred thousand dollars. Right, because right. right. that's our commitment. That's right. So and they'll, they'll be involved every step of the way. And they, but yeah. as they read that quite clear. Yeah. As I as I recall too, they're they're. They wanted to make sure the contingencies, they wanted to make sure there was enough money put aside to build and complete it, not just. Right. That's why we had to have right. FF and &E in there. That's mm -hmm. why we had to, because they don't want to have a half done project. They don't want you to have a basketball court in there. Right. Mm -hmm. half fast. I mean, I remember when, when um, who was our engineer from Conway had to buy seating for the, for the auditorium in the new high school because. I uh, forgot to put the chairs in there, you know, forgot the seating. But, yeah. Yeah. Plus, it gives you the chance to look at the EOC options. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, you, you might have more available there than you know. I did a facility in Belknap County where it was already a building, 
and the EOC, we, we applied for the EOC grant and they bought us a generator. And plus all of the ATC, uh, automatic transfer switch and everything that goes with it. Yeah. And the communication systems in the existing building. Mm -hmm. It didn't cost a dime. Yeah, and I mean, that brings yeah. us back to the telephone system. We don't have that in there in the school <coughs> budget. We don't have and you could create a budget that at least works up towards something that maximizes that grant. Yeah. And we can work with Cobb Hill pulling out the numbers that they have already for the generator costs, the ATC costs, the, some of the communications that are in the EOC space. Um, finish it, well, it used to be you could include finish it. I think that's considered the build part of the building now. But we can, we can come up with a number that we feel is realistic. Um, so that we could get that. Yes, yeah, so we can get the application in. Um, and Mike. But you said that's done for this year anyway. I believe, yeah, the award for this year is, is done. Um, We're already looking at that year. The only question I had was, you know, to the timing. We have to have some numbers for one article at some point if we're going to ask for more money. So, right. timing, if we. Go well, that's, to January. I mean, we have to nail these guys down for January. Right. Right. You mentioned January. Right. We need it done in January. So that's what I'm getting at. That, yeah, that's my point. has to be signed around the end of January. End of January. Okay. So. <coughs> yeah. So if there are some parts of those that numbers put together in December, that's handy because. Well, we'll start in December. Yeah. <coughs> that was that was my point. You started saying January. They well, said December. I think you need to start doing it in December to have it ready for January. Yeah, I think yeah. what you were saying is Christmas time. Nobody answers the phone. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can ask as much. I mean, <laughs> it's summertime, and we can just go to your yeah, But so, even if you put the bids out right. mid December and they're due back mid January, they'll get a start on it before the Christmas, and and, they, and then they get that turnover into the new year to. Yeah, we know that. Pretty clear on the critical ones. I mean, the cement bit probably will stay the same other than the raw cost of the cement. Yeah. Uh, we do have to ask those questions, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll probably go back to all the folks and say, so what's changed in your number? Right. And in most of the cases, they, they hold them short of material costs. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, I think we asked this before, but I'm not sure. Um, did, did you reach out to any local subs in this area for pricing? I know a lot of a lot of the contractors are, are people that you have an existing relationship with, and that makes perfect sense. Uh, but some of the uh, some of the sub we have a, a pretty good uh, local base of. And I, I don't. Remember seeing bids from anybody in this area? There was one there? local guy that we, and I, and I apologize, I just can't remember which one it was, and I believe we carried his number. Mm -hmm. I just don't remember what discipline it was. East Coast Foundation had a bid in on the country. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 they, and they were higher. higher. Yes. Yeah. We did advertise locally. Yeah. Correct. Well, yeah, I don't know, you did the newspapers? We did the Roth. Yeah. Yeah. You did the newspapers, I put it on the <coughs> website. Charlie Fritz didn't do that. No, well, he's more instrumentation. Is so. that going instrumentation? Yeah. yeah, and plus he's heavy into the water and wastewater treatment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Big <coughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. fat. Let's go. Gordon, did, yeah. I see, did I see a flicker in your eyes back there? <coughs> when we built the fire station, mm -hmm. uh, we had contractor nights. Well, everybody had say here, here's a job, here's a town job. We got one bid for one thing. Uh, when we did the library, virtually no local bidding at all. Hmm. It's bigger than what our guys are used to doing. And also, they're quite frankly, happy building houses, because there's more money in for houses than if we're doing a project like this. And hmm. I'm getting that from yeah, no, you, get a, the you get a couple of homeowners looking over your shoulder as opposed to architects and engineers and all the rest of it. So. Yeah. Well, I, I just, <coughs> just my point. No, I, I think that's good. And <coughs> you had a, I, I want to I want to make sure that there's the opportunity there, mm -hmm. so that we're not cut. cut I think I saw one didn't submit a bid for uh, 
the alarm system. Yeah, night security. We were working with night security for months before the bids went out, and they were promising stuff. Mm -hmm. And well, then we, and we should still try to work with them because that's one area. <coughs> excuse me, that the <coughs> mistake at the fire department, and the chiefs recognized it as a mistake, is that by not utilizing a local security company. Now, if you get a security mm -hmm. issue, it's just the library, for example, yeah, had a yeah right. And so what happens is, they're the they're the folks that we work with on an ongoing basis. Sure. So once the system's <laughs> in, they're the ones that that provide the monitoring and and do the maintenance and repair. And uh, we did have an issue come up recently with, with the library. Mm -hmm. Was was it in the library yeah. where where some of the components were something that it's a proprietary component, right. mm -hmm. but from somebody else, yeah. So it's it impossible for local right. service to happen. Well, if you have any pull at night security, <clears throat> give them a call because we've called them twice, talked to them once, okay. and still never got any pricing. And yeah. I, I said I was I was talking to them even before call bill started bidding, and they were because I was trying to get them to help us finalize the spec, knowing that they had the experience with you and mm -hmm. right. know what you were, and, and <coughs> work it into with what the equipment you already have. <coughs> and they were helpful, but they never actually. We will have the chief call. Them. Yeah, you guys had last time we met. There was a um, paving contractor speaking to you guys about your paving. Is, is that a local guy? Carroll, so paving out of yeah. F R Carroll is who does our road paving, mm -hmm. um, and they actually belong somebody else bought it. Uh, it's, I mean, it's but he still well, does Coleman by then. No, uh, <coughs> um, it's, a, it's a bigger company. Yeah, so he's still running it. Frank right. Carroll is, but yeah, they're out of uh, uh, Limerick. Limerick. Yeah. I'm trying to think if we can pull out of this site contractor's number. He's putting a margin on it. If it was somebody at local that you guys have a working relationship, maybe there's a two percent, three percent cost. Well, we got to talk about paving when we get to the uh, budget creation as well. So when we have Carroll back in. Well, that would be a time to be able to yeah, yeah, we'll see if we can include it on the budget. Maybe sweeten the deal a little bit. Some of them don't like to do parking lots, if you will, yeah, they smaller. Yeah, true. They but, do. But we've already got it here paid or something, and mobilization isn't quite as bad than it might work. Right. And that's the kind of thing that if, if there's other vendors that you're using, that you guys have a little bit of pull on. But we don't have that. Mm -hmm. right. Can I ask a question? On there the is question someone from Paul that lives in town, yes. The electrician that they carried said that he was in conversation <coughs> with the co op that they wouldn't allow the cable to go underneath the building unless there was this higher spec required, right. um, which is beyond the code requirements. And the, and the engineers didn't, they came up with a solution which they felt would be cost effective. and but it's still within the building. Mm -hmm. But the, the bidder said that the co-op won't let you do that. So the alternative, I'm thinking, I can, I can, I'll, I'll speak with the engineer to make sure this is all viable, but if the <coughs> town was willing to take ownership of the utility at a closer to the property line, so to speak, that if we had a, a panel or a disconnect in the meter, before it drops into the ground, then you own it from from there all the way to the building. Mm -hmm. If anything goes wrong after the meter, it's your deal, but it could also save a significant amount of money. Well, we can go underground to the meter from the road. It's just that we own the meter to the building. Right, right. so right. if the meter is on the building, then they need a higher spec Whereas if we can get the meter away from the building, then you own from there to the so. <coughs> so if the meter is on the building, but before it goes under the slab, then that's no problem, right? No. Uh, no. It, it seems to be, to be off the building. So we have to. I mean, I, All right. That's what I did at my house. Yeah. Is I drop the the power onto a meter board and then ran underground. But from that meter to the house, it's ours. Yeah. Right, sure. If, if, it, if the wire goes wrong, you have to replace <laughs> right. it, which right. happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all 
four inch conduit. I mean, it's not as if it's going to right. break. And I don't. I think if we sighted it properly, we wouldn't even go underneath the driveway. So yeah, I got any frost issues either. But I, I, I just wanted to run that past you so we can, I can talk to it, the yeah. engineers about that and what, what the options are. Well, I don't see any problem with that, having it off the building. Uh, keep it out of the driveway. If you go across yeah. the driveway, you have to put it in the concrete. So. Yeah. Really? Duck bank, I believe you have to. Mm -hmm. huh. I know a On a commercial type yeah. building, but not, yeah. not a bad yeah. house. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but there's plenty of, I mean, if you look at the, this band over here, and this, and you could run it back. Yeah, I don't at the moment, there's the things coming here. from over here. They're coming from over there. To the, yeah, the line. We're going to go across the wetlands. <laughs> well, I, I think the, draw, the um, engineer's drawing is somewhat of a, an assumption of where it would run from. I'm pretty sure there's a pole over here. So. Maybe you know, maybe you know that bank right now. Maybe it may not be the right kind of pole. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh, we're yeah. Yeah. So, the new pole and transfer. And then they're coming across the driveway. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess so. Yeah. Good. This, this is the older plan. Oh, yeah. the fort just it. Yeah. But it's, it would still be the same issue. Cause it's it's just just the other way, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, sorry, yeah, but, but it's still, still, it's still be the driveway. Yeah, it's still driveway. Yeah. I think you're fine. So this is overhead. It's so across the road, yeah. Right, but if they come overhead to a pole over here, then you can go around the side. Yep. We can have our own utility pole. Don't they do that? But one, you can get one. one. You can get one, yeah, yeah. generally. Residential, certainly, you can get one. Well, they already got one right here, right? They're putting in. That's on the street. I mean, just. Right. Of putting Whether it they here. can put it there, can they put it over here, here? Yeah. Right. or can they come off? Right. Yeah, that's a pull there. That's a pull there. Or, <coughs> I mean, either way, even if you, even if we still ran it around the building, it would be shorter distance. Right. It could come off mm -hmm. a different location, up, up the road instead of down here. Right. Yeah. You don't remember how much, roughly? No. He, he wasn't giving an exact number on how much extra that was. Nope. Yeah. <coughs> Is it probably maybe crazy to ask this, but could we move the mechanical room? <laughs> well, we do all kinds of things. I'm just saying, <laughs> save the corner to the pot. Well, I mean, it would be a lot less expensive to go off a different pole. Yeah. <laughs> I just then your plumbing changes. I, I, I get that, but oh, it becomes more of a drawing thing, I think, though, than a okay. I don't know. How much can you change? Can put how much do you say? Uh, 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 yeah, we can switch your room, the, the chief's office, everything has to be approved. So, yeah, that's front, fine. The front <laughs> corner is the chief's. <laughs> Yeah, the, the simple solution would just be to mirror the building. Then the driveway's coming in around here. I, I don't know, I just yeah. toss that out as a put rather than going to the slab with the mechanic with the electric, but obviously right. there's other issues that uh, pop up. But going into the, the slab's not a problem as long as the as long as the meter's off the off the building, right? Isn't right. that what they said? Right? As long as we Put the meter. Oh yeah, yeah, someplace else. Up, upstream. Right. As, as long as the, as long as the, the, I guess the utilities issue is if they have to replace a wire, they don't want it going under the building without a disconnect on either side or something. Mm -hmm. like that. Like, right. Somebody comes and cuts the uh, concrete to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, they still own it. Yeah, they own up to the meter, right? Yes, they own yeah. to the meter socket. Yeah. <coughs> Alright. <coughs> cool. So do we want to make any decisions as far as the
cost savings that they sent up out. Well, I. I mean, so I so we're not going forward, and and. Uh, but Phil's going to need to ask the questions. I I, I I So so what's the downside to looking at some of these things uh, to to verify whether it some some of the suggestions. Yeah, I, mean, we can, I can certainly discuss that with the engineers. Right. What, um, I mean, some of them, they're clearly going to be, there's going to be a, a long-term performance issue. It's so, definitely a, a downgrade in spec. Right. And other, other items may not. And you've got to verify whether the, the grant needs a full building generator, because they've downgraded the generator to just... I'm, I'm almost 100% positive if you're going to go the EOC route, you're going to have to have a full. And probably have to check on that water heater size as well. Well, and the, the water heater was, goes back to the chief's um, needing to be able to wash the cars down. I just, I'm, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know why. Why? This isn't. We're not going to be doing it that often, and I guess my question is: You have a is it electric or oh, it's a heat pump one, right? Electric heat pump one. Is that what water they heater? Exchange? I believe it was a heat pump water heater. Yeah. Why don't we have like on demand or something? You mean like a wood pipe? Yeah. I don't know that we have a. Because um, I don't think we're going to be using it. It's like a house: washing laundry, taking showers, constantly in use. <coughs> I, I don't know. Well, according to the engineer, the the on-demand system is not going to keep up with the, the water usage for washing a car. Oh. <coughs> um, I can I can ask him again, but his sense was you're going to need a, a minimum size storage tank, um, and even that, you're you know if the return rate on that you're going to wash if, one car so, and you're going to have to wait a while. So let me just ask a basic question about washing the cars. Yeah. Where is the water going to go? That's floor drains. Yeah. And where does the floor drain go? Yeah. Holding tank? Holding tank. And so we go into the same thing we have with the fire department with the, having somebody come and pump the holding tank out. Uh, you can't do it without a floor drain. Hmm? Well, you. I took all the floor drains out of the dealership because you just ran into this fucking pollution issue. That's right. Which is why you have to have a holding yeah. tank and you bring safe harbors in to clean it out and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, There's no car wash in town, though. Yeah. But the, well, uh, but the, I mean, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I see it being a problem not having the floor drains in the garage. Um, but I mean, there there could there there could especially if that's the Sally Port you're bringing somebody in. There could be a point where you do need to wash the floor down, regardless of having it. There is an eye wash station in there too, right? Yeah, it's an eye wash station. Yeah. Oh. it should have a shower head over it. I don't know if that's part of it or not. I believe it's yeah. a combo. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I I'm not disagreeing with you about having a floor drain in the garage, but I'm I'm just saying. I guess, I mean, well, that all of that is a, is a package that has to, if you're going to be anticipating doing, you know, washing vehicles, <coughs> now you got to have a system that's sized enough to handle all that. Right. Uh, and it, it doesn't, it doesn't go into the septic, it goes into right. the holding tank. And you bring the safe harbors, whoever, in to call, haul the stuff away when you get done with it. Right. So. And if it was just for the occasional washing down of the garage, you'd still have that, but it would be mm -hmm. less frequent that you'd right. actually have to have it empty. That would be the only advantage. Okay, so you're going to check with the engineers. Our hope is to build a police station that we want to have for 50 years. So. I'm not oh. I'm really interested in shortchanging the heating system or the electrical system. The floor coverings, I guess there's some savings there. The floor coverings are floor coverings, so you can always manage that. I would only, I mean, if, if you want to go with concrete, 
in the processing area, seal the concrete. It might be nice to at least add some stain into that before you right. seal mm -hmm. it. <coughs> so it's got some kind of a finished appearance. Because even a sealed concrete floor doesn't look like a finished floor. Mm -hmm. no. right. <laughs> okay. Motions. Are we done? I, no I motions. Think, huh? No motions. Do we need to vote? Do you think? To table it? I don't know. We're not going to spend the money this year. Well, we. No, we're not. Unless something else happens, but. Right. So if you don't have a motion, then I'm thinking that. Because we're going to want to put all the money in and have it. So. Is that, I'm just I, feeling I, some I, kind I of motion needs to be here. <laughs> I, I, I don't know that that's something that it has to be acted on before the authority expires, which is the end of December. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, because I think we got word from DRA that we're going to raise the taxes anyway. It's just going to go into a, an account. Okay. Yeah. So everything moves forward on, yep. on that end. <clears throat> Yep. Um, not raise taxes, but raise the money for the building. We don't know about raising taxes yet. Yeah, that's right. Well, no, no, we don't know that the tax rate may not go up. I just want to clarify that if anybody heard that. This is modern monetary theory. <laughs> chase contractors to this, that, and the other at this point. I, I do want to continue to move our process forward right. so that uh, that we're in a position to <coughs> to bring a complete, fully funded, this is what it's going to be before right. the voters. This is how much more money we need to And, and maybe Phil can probably get, a, get us some idea of what kind of timing we'd be looking at on that grant. So if that was going to yeah. happen in, I don't know when they award it, April, June, whatever. So we have some talking points, as I said, going forward. Right. Yeah, I've got a couple of emails from the, the grant administrator. I just don't remember exactly what she said, so I'll, I'll verify. Yeah, we don't know what's going to happen between now and January 1st. In a big, bigger in the world. big picture. Yep. You know, Crazy times. Some infrastructure thing happens that includes police stations. We will want that. When I opened the, Buy the, union, bucks, man. the, the <laughs> union leader up the, the other day, and the headline across the top of the page was Manchester's identified $46 million worth of projects that they're going to be able to use the money that the that they, not that, they, more. that the feds are, are yeah. sending to them I'm thinking okay so that's the same bucket of money that we that we've been told is only available to to replace revenue that we had a shortfall during COVID right. so they're seeing something that I'm not seeing I guess well we had a revenue shortfall and that nobody moved their business into Tufton Borough well that's right yeah. That's right. No. Yeah. So one of the effect one one could argue that one of the effects of the COVID is this rapid spike in pricing that we're seeing and everything. I I, I don't know if that qualifies for some of this federal money, but it should be a couple million. That's all we need. Yeah. You know, they they throw us a quarter of a million today. I mean. <coughs> Yep. A million here, a million there. Pretty soon you're talking real money. <laughs> yep. So Gentlemen, I, I appreciate the ongoing effort you do as the chair. I'm sorry we're not having a happy party today, but yeah, I, no, I, 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 I think you said you I appreciate, appreciate you saying, hey, and then we keep we wow. <laughs> chasing it, <laughs> chiseling it, and do you work for Charles too? Yeah. And and. And, and putting effort into something that's not going to get us to where we need to be to get the project started this year. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's the cool, prudent but, thing is to yeah. see what happens in the marketplace. All the roasters were good. Yes, you will. You may not have it's to change work, anything, yeah. and there's yeah. some way that it changes the environment that you can get to where you go. Yeah, and if it doesn't, then we have to go back to the yeah. town and ask them if they want to go forward. But yeah. the yeah. last thing yeah. you should want or that you want is to build a building yeah. and yeah. have us spend yeah. the rest of our lives <laughs> explaining right. why we had to shortcut everything. Well, you know, yeah. this building that we're in now, uh, the, the new part, mm -hmm. some of the features that were designed in it and were anticipated, I understand, were cut out when they yeah. uh, had to build in it, and as a result, it's the, the 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 use is limited from what was originally anticipated, and that was what, 27 years ago. And you haven't gone back to upgrade it to the original design yet. No, no so that's right. Mm -hmm. so that's right. So you just, you just years ago. Well, I, I don't know. It was before I was here. But she was in old. Chief Barry's report. He was ecstatic over the new facility. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's improvement on what well, they had. Well, that's because he was operating. <laughs> he was the only guy there. He was working on the back corner of the townhouse, right? Yes. So this yes. looked great. But I mean, the whole second floor here with the accessibility right. issue, they, there was supposed to be an elevator. Yeah. Right. That, that was cut out. Right. Uh, so that space <laughs> is not public space today. Uh, you know, but, but that's an easy fix. Hmm? Yeah. It is yeah. an easy fix. All it takes is money. Yeah. <laughs> well, or motivation. All right. And, and anybody have any final thoughts? Mr. Budget Committee Chairman, any final thoughts? <coughs> I think you're. Uh, uh, I think you're on the right track by saying wait until after the first of the year because, as you say, I can't spend money I don't have. Exactly. Exactly. <coughs> And, and, you're, and, and don't make the American way. <laughs> <laughs> and as you say, and don't and don't make the mistake of shortchanging your uh, shortchanging fifty years for for what you're waiting for the time, right? Good. Appreciate you guys' time. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. You guys are doing all well, right. Up. We'll see you. We'll see you sometime. Time to meet. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. So, all right. We'll stay in touch. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Long term friends. If you'd like to move to town, thank you, Kevin. Bye, Jim. Yeah, that'd be cheap. I'll just let him over. Oh, God. Oh, I want to come to Mulder. Maybe you know what Zoom what the Zoom was for the Tsar? Yes. Yes. Plug your house in. Oh. Yeah. All right. Any other business to come before us at this workshop? Don't be grim, but should leave in the room. There you go. Anything, Joe? I have nothing, thank you. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.